Hi everyone, my name is Steven. I'm the founder of the project Harmony Protocol. Happy and great to be here, Adam and Kyle, for we, uh, we imagine. Hi everybody, I'm Kyle Alica. I'm co-founder of Topio Networks and also our principal blockchain analyst in everything decentralized, including decentralized applications, DeFi, and our favorite subject today, non-fungible tokens as well. Also an investor on the side and a big Big fan of Harmony, Stephen, and Adam and Mouse Belt as well. So, thank you for having me here at Reimagine, and welcome to the conference. Hello, and welcome to Reimagine 2021. This is our eighth conference in a monthly series of events, bringing you nothing but the best projects, bright minds, and leaders in the space. We've been fortunate enough to invite many talented individuals and teams to come speak with us, providing updates, insights, and, and all the above that's happening in crypto. Um, I'll be your host today, Adam, from the Mousebell team, where we focus on early stage investments through our accelerator or providing development support to a number of growing projects, as well as education within um, our Mousebell University program. Our main objective and goals are simple. It's increasing adoption, use cases, um, and real world applications. Um, we seek to educate our audience on blockchain by helping them understand crypto's real impact. Again, thank you all for tuning in to Reimagine 2021. Um, I have a friend, a colleague, um, an exciting, you know, thought leader uh, coming here from uh, the Bay Area, Stephen C. How you doing? Co-founder of Protocol, uh, Harmony Protocol. How you doing today? Doing great, Adam. It's been wonderful knowing you over the years. Really coming down to this market, whether NFT or another great Ethereum and uh, DeFi run. I think we have so many exciting thing progress in the industry, and you focusing on education, and we get to know each other over the last year. Um, sharing like different ideas and the uh, ambitions finally is happening. Awesome, awesome. Kyle, how are you doing today? I have a guest host, Kyle Alicott. Go ahead and introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, thank you, Adam, again for having me here. This is an absolute tons of fun. I'm very excited to be here and talk about, as Stephen said, a very hot subject for all of us studying in the blockchain space and just seeing the evolution of tokenization. Uh, as a whole, right? So kind of reset the stage for us, you know, non-fungible tokens, NFTs. Uh, what's so unique about these? Well, just that they are tokens that are unique. Uh, so they are unique and they are indivisible. Uh, we're seeing several use cases like art and collectibles and moments and others, but those are just a use case of an NFT, whereas fungible tokens or FTs, those are something very similar and, and uh, or excuse me, very different, like one Bitcoin is equal to one Bitcoin. They're one to one, uh, if you will. So want to reset that stage for everyone because we got a ton to talk about. Happy to be here again. I'm co-founder of Topio Networks and also an investor in the space and excited. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm, I'm glad to really have this discussion, right? I got two friends uh, kind of uh, chatting about crypto, blockchain and, and everything else in between. Um, for all of you, you know, that may have missed our previous conferences, Harmony has been a big supporter, um, has been on our show multiple times. We have workshops with Harmony. Uh, so feel free to visit our YouTube channel uh, at, at, uh, at uh, Reimagine 2021. Um, Harmony actually is one of our partners for Blockchain Education Alliance. They're one of our members uh, supporting education, students, professors, faculty, which is pretty critical, uh, especially at these early stages, right, of, of our industry. So without further ado, let's kind of let's kind of get into it. So Stephen, man, you know, I've known you now for probably a few years between your family and mine, we could probably start a baseball team, <laughs> but, but aside from that, aside from that, um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, people can find out about Harmony Protocol, there's tons of content, mm -hmm. blogs, articles, mm -hmm. your team, your team is super mm -hmm. solid in, in, in engagement and kind of keeping updates and, and very fortunate mm -hmm. there, uh, but I kind of want to get, you know, I want to pivot off of that in terms of what's your vision with blockchain, mm -hmm. with Harmony? Like, how do you see that from a holistic view? Like, what's mm -hmm. the impact that, you know, our audience here that, you know, trying to understand aside from the cryptocurrency, like the technology, like, well, mm -hmm. how do you see this making a difference, especially with Harmony? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Adam. 
it's very amazing that uh, Southern Bay Area, we really get to engage so many folks like you guys. Building over years, doesn't matter where the market is, but talking about the long-term vision. It's one thing to write a market, knowing what are the how things this market, and we should really do a lot of things with it, building, really engaging people globally. It's another to know where things are going so that I will still see you around building that in a few years, whether we have achieved why we started in the industry. To us, to Harmony, the vision is knowing that there'll be many economics activities, financial applications, but what are the general theme and vision is we think that there are many open platform applications, really, whether about the community that we are able to tokenize, whether it's about this share, shareable collectibles that we can help these artists or people and business to really form um, some kind of agreement. I do see lots of application going towards that for that case to come. So it's really the question of what we start now, how do we see in a year, what will be um, many application coming in five years. I do think that the Harmony has a lot of work to do with providing a platform, making it scalable, bringing community and building towards that. Awesome, awesome. And and to kind of piggyback off of that, you know, I've been going to Steven's uh, hacker house out here in the Bay Area for, for quite some time for some nice barbecues, you know, every Saturday. Um, great individuals, good, good people coming together, just talking, catching up, um, really establishing a relationship, understanding the trends, you know, the nuances of it and, and, you know, building off of that. How important, because people think, you know, build, you know, we, we will, you know, build the tech and they will come, right? Like that doesn't really apply. You can have a really nice product, solution, technology. If you don't have any users, if you don't have a community, then, you know, then you have something that's just really nice. So community, Harmony is super big on that engagement. Can you talk about that and why that's important and critical, especially especially in, in blockchain crypto, where you've mentioned this in, in the past of like traditional marketing and then now like social marketing, right? There's a big difference here. Absolutely. I think you use the word community so many times is what we ascribe to. As a matter of fact, probably the reason why we'll get into talking about NFT with uh, all three of us here, right? But why we managed to start with the community three years ago, I think it's really still the special thing about Silicon Valley. If not, hopefully later on, we'll be about Miami and in Shenzhen and globally other places that the community really get you filtered about how to help each other build up the dreams together. So much noise, so many crazy things, but it's the people that lasts. We managed to host, people call us even the barbecue community or barbecue coin. Uh, it's fun to laugh about it, but we did it for three years, every week, three hours at a time. Sometimes yeah. last into six hours. That is real that people come back and tell you what are the great things, what is happening. That we forgot that's why um, the garage culture, the community that helped build some of the earlier hardwares and now mobiles and now um, this uh, tokenized economy is possible. It is, you can search Twitter and Google all day long for information. It's actually the best people they can kind on that build a community together. And to kind of dig a little bit deeper in terms of you guys have, we talked about this before, before uh, our interview here of like going back to China, like, can you mm. talk about maybe the um, compare and contrast or mm -hmm. what are some of the benefits, right? To, to kind of, I think mm -hmm. you guys have an office out there. Am, am I right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, what, you know, how does a community thrive out there and, and your mm -hmm. community here in the States and then, then mm -hmm. other parts of the world? So uh, actually uh, last week, uh, Harmony mm -hmm. and Spell, we just hosted an event mm -hmm. in Tanzania um, mm -hmm. and it was really great. And, and Harmony CTO, uh, Ronjin was was uh, presenting mm -hmm. and, um, you know, that region out there is, mm -hmm. we set up a Harmony node. I helped them set up a Harmony node. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, mm -hmm. there was about like 75, you know, students, faculty that showed up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's I, I'm trying to extend that community, but absolutely, yeah. How do you feel, you know, why did you open up out there? You know, mm -hmm. what are some of those strategic regions and, and you know, mm -hmm. what did you learn? Yeah, I was just catching up with Kyle that we learned so much about uh, blockchain and Bitcoin white paper before we go to China a few years ago. And suddenly it really gave me a strong sense that even a few years ago, there's a strong technical community, developed community that really draw us in. So we actually saw an engineering office there for that reason, right? And I can tell what happened the last few years in China about crypto, but let's, short, uh, let's uh, shortcut to what happened the last few months. NFT got so big. 
And I would say for the rest of the year in, in China in particular, if not Asia, it will be even bigger. So for us, capturing the talent, knowing the conversation, knowing what things people are building uh, is going to be so important. And we we're so lucky that we managed to do a few roadshow there a few years ago. Last year was too hard. So hopefully whether uh, we'll do more of this collaboration, uh, I, I think this year will be still tough, but then I think people finally caught on to what Asia and globally and a single valley can do together. NFT will be a very strong community. And I'm really, and I'll, I'll let Kyle jump in, you know, mm -hmm. right now. And I'm kind of bringing this up ultimately really because we have like students watching, we have, you know, people coming in that are just hearing about crypto and blockchain over the last, you know, I don't know, a few months really, or, or maybe a period of time here and there. Um, but people miss, you know, maybe underestimate the Bitcoin just didn't happen overnight. It might seem mm -hmm. like it just happened, but I mean, this, you know, you're a cryptographer, like you study cryptography, um, you know, dis blockchain is really just a buzzword and cryptography mm -hmm. distributed systems have been around for decades. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to highlight really like, you know, you guys have six co-founders, like that's pretty tough mm -hmm. to find. I mean, high quality, you know, mm -hmm. individuals, people that you trust to, to, to build a company one, mm -hmm. and then you're an emerging tech and, and I think people just think like, oh, you know, it's just a technology technology that you pick up. But ultimately, you've been studying this for for years. Um, mm -hmm. The distributed system aspect, the 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 the, the components and fundamentals of, of blockchain have been around for decades. And so, mm -hmm. you know, everybody watching, like, there's so much information out there. There there's people that are that are working on this technology, just like the Harmony team, um, plugging away, chugging away, trying things, experimenting, innovating, and and mm -hmm. as you can see from their success and and there, as he's mentioned, there's a lot of work to be done. But you, you guys are in a good position. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Adam, just to touch back on that for a second, I mean, let's 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 jump in the time machine and run back for a second. So 2008, right? We get the white paper. Uh, at the end of 2008, we get the white paper of this P2P or peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, electronic cash system. First time we've all got a chance to see it. And then not much longer later, I think it was on January 3rd, 2009, the Genesis or first uh, block was mined on the Bitcoin network, right? That's, that's when it all began from the, the idea of what we're talking about today, right? Tokenization, blockchain, a lot of these words that those may be hearing for the first time. It all began back then. And during the, the next few years, it was a little bit you know, quiet. There wasn't much conversation going on outside of a small group of, of individuals. And then all of a sudden, we start to see some movement, right? 2013, we have the general uh, theory of decentralized applications come out with uh, David Johnson uh, and many others. It was a group of, I believe, 12 individuals that put together a framework for the future of applications, something that Stephen and his team at Harmony are outstanding at, and those are called dApps, right? So we'll, we'll refer to it there going forward. And I do have a question around dApps for you here in a minute, Stephen, looking at a cool tutor tutorial you guys have online. But 2013, most people, for most people, the next big milestone in the industry is 2017. Crypto kitties and cyberpunks come out as the first NFTs uh, on Ethereum and pretty much take down the network we go into the ICO boom that we're all familiar with or, or should be as well. 2019, we start to see a little bit more of an infrastructure. 2020, we see this very big excitement where things are becoming real. Enterprise is here. We're seeing applications or dApps. We get the DeFi summer uh, as well that leads into today's topic of non-fungible tokens in this boom we're seeing. But fun fact, the first non-fungible token, the first NFT was actually created in 2014 uh, as well. And it was called Quantum. Yeah, so I, I did some research for us. Fun fact, uh, you can fact check me out there on Wikipedia, everybody. It is there that two individuals created a, a little GIF, a little video image of a rotating uh, <laughs> dollar sign in a picture frame. That was the first NFT. So there you go. That's crazy. Um, as well. So with, with that being said, that was a little time travel. Let's come back to the present. Here we are in 2021. Uh, Stephen, before we get into dApps, you, know, you talked about China um, and you talked about putting roots on the ground and how important that was to your business and to your community, but it gave you something and an edge, if anything, on your competitors. It allowed you to hear and see and be a part of what was happening on the ground. And as Adam mentioned, we've got people all around the world listening to this on, you know, from educations to executives and investors. 
Can you share maybe a little bit of what you're seeing from a pulse perspective in Asia? So for, for those listening, what activity do you see happening throughout the blockchain industry around Asia right now? Yeah, I'm very glad you asked that question. As a matter of fact, I'm learning at the same time and telling you the story that I learned on the fly. But then China has been quite suppressed on the whole DeFi, if not even some of the fiat um, interaction because of politics, because of uh, government control, for good reasons, right? But then the economy is definitely booming. So what are they going to do next with the blockchain it was very unclear last year. Right, many people got burned out. Many people like exit the game, just holding on to BTC, which is fine. Last year was a wake-up moment, not just for DeFi, but suddenly, not just about investors, but everyone doing collectibles. Obviously, on blockchain. As a matter of fact, CryptoKitties was super big in China during that time. Now coming back here, many of the mainstream artists. I'm talking about like. Um, the top five, top 10 artists, um, many of the collectibles of cards, as well as um, people actually like to share with the kids of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Easter eggs, um, that ten, probably a, do- a dollar or 10, that it will be a social phenomenon. That is going to be my boy, because uh, we have been talking about like, technical advances, blockchain technology, privacy and cryptography. And then suddenly it will be a full-blown trillion dollar economy that will be happening on some platform that are literally global. So that level of explosion, um, I will be expecting to see this year. So I'm gonna throw a side question to you. And this is, mm-hmm. this is a little bit of a curveball, and I apologize in mm-hmm. advance, but I think it's relevant uh, mm-hmm. on all sides. So from, from Asia to decentralized applications to then non-fungible tokens. So. You know, in China, we've got WeChat that is the Mm. primary application that everyone uses. And Mm. uh, Korea and Japan, we have a few others, including Line Mm -hmm. uh, and Mm -hmm. others. Um, Do you see these, what a lot of people refer to as super apps, uh, Mm -hmm. as something that NFTs for today's Mm -hmm. use cases, like art and collectibles and moments Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, moments, do do you see those maybe being integrated and Mm -hmm. just put on display for mm-hmm. the users, because these apps, for those that may not know, are very mm-hmm. social. So, Stephen, do you see that as something that could happen? They have to. It's already happening. And it's really actually the main driver of adoption, right? For sure, Kakao in Korea is actually one of the earliest ones. I understand both digital items, virtual assets, as well as uh, part of their mobile life. For sure, gamings, right? That actually is going to be a strong adoption from, strong from telecom which is going to be crazy, right? The last two decades of money and uh, driver adoption, user adoption is coming from those uh, big platform that day one now, um, uh, China in the last 10 years is also innovating there. Many of the mobile apps suddenly have like 100 millions of users. What can you do, right? And I would think that um, now that, uh, especially, I will probably over talk about the China market, but it's true that they don't need to worry about the government censoring them because it's an investment opportunity, right? To them, it's just collectibles that uh, is virtual gifts that they, they will be interacting both socially, but also on the mobile, you know, super apps, as you said. Okay. Well, and society, uh, you know, and from a social perspective, just to add on mm-hmm. to that, uh, you know, a lot of those applications, like you said, already have uh, mm-hmm. types of digital goods baked in as well. Mm-hmm. So the mentality is very different than say here in the United States mm-hmm. or in other areas uh, like Latin America, a transformative mm-hmm. market or Africa, or even Europe as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because in China, for those who may not know, traditionally you could get what's called a red packet. Uh, mm-hmm. And there's an envelope that's sent to you in WeChat and it's a digital mm-hmm. uh, you know, digital envelope. Exactly. You open it up and there's something, a gift inside, right? So mm-hmm. I think you're calling that out very right, uh, Stephen, as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, Adam, I think so. Wait, yeah. uh, <laughs> regarding, regarding Line and WeChat, are you saying, mm-hmm. um, Mm-hmm. Those are still centralized uh, mm-hmm. parties, right? So mm-hmm. they, my question, Stephen, actually is decentralization versus centralization. Mm-hmm. Where do you lie? Like there's people mm-hmm. that are like, I want everything decentralized, you know, and then mm-hmm. there's those that don't care. Um, mm-hmm. How do you see, is this going to be a hybrid kind of environment for us to pick and choose uh, mm-hmm. certain aspects that, you know, can, can be decentralized and, you know, self-sovereign and, and I own, you know, I own X, Y, and Z. Uh, versus Mm -hmm. centralization where everybody's like used to giving up their social security number to just to go to Walgreens, you know, whatever the case is. Um, Where do you lie on that aspect? Because yeah, there's people that are, that are maximalists on either end. Um, Mm -hmm. What's to do, what degree do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, 
this decentralization is the only reason. Right? We'll get them much, much, much slower because of decentralized, but it's the only way to get to 7.8 billion people. So what you asked me, are we working with my particular government and uh, a particular super app? Sure, I mean, even PayPal, uh, Visa, everyone is actually helping on board, right? Uh, and uh, these few months has also proved that there are many centralized network, a centralized platform that can have great adoption and they will catch many of the market value capture very well. But which is great, right? Just like a big company like Google and Apple that I used to work with, they always be able to create 100 million, if not billion users adoption very quickly. But then I think that students, especially the audience now starting, having the mentality of decentralization, it doesn't be like, you don't need to think about what, where the 10 billion people coming from in, in 30 years, but then thinking about serving a billion users or more, starting from decentralized actually force you to build a community, right? force you to open source, force you to, to distribute your tokens, force you to write down your culture and your mission much more openly. And by definition, it's decentralized, right? There are different scale of how many validators you have and who control, uh, who control the asset, is flow a real NFT if you cannot withdraw it. That's okay, that's just all experiments. But for the audience, especially students to come in this space, don't forget, it's actually decentralization. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you jump in, Kyle. Like, I've had this discussion too. You know, the the mindset of the next generation, um, this current generation, um, native, you know, native internet money, right? Native applications to to the internet. Right now, we're still in Web 2.0. Like, people are trying to plug in this emerging tech into kind of traditional business models and, and the way that we operate, but where the real innovation lies is, you know, I believe on the decentralization side, and we haven't even hit those, you know, those limits yet. I, I think it's endless. Um, so like you said, you know, the, the future are going to, it's going to be native to them to kind of operate this way. Um, and it's going to be real, real interesting because I think the big players right now do see that trend. And that's why they're obviously dipping their toe in the water uh, to kind of fill it out. And not only that, um, maintain market share or like users, right. By, you know, your, your visas, your MasterCards of the world, your PayPal's and like try to try to hold on. But I think that's just kind of a transition phase and like, you know, we're still kind of not, not even peaking. Right. Um, did you have something, Kyle? No, I was just going to say, I mean, you brought up a great point. I mean, think about it. When, when we all were introduced to the internet, the idea of buying things was, was just that it was just an idea. And then all of a sudden we were able to buy, sell and transact with e-commerce, uh, right. And then we, we envisioned a world where we could communicate and connect. And all of a sudden we have social networking. And then all of a sudden we have, you know, things like these digital goods and digital stores and all of this stuff that is existing in our world today. Now, what uh, we've all found in from various reasons. So, again, to your point, all sides of the table are, are welcomed here is that there are faults in that network. And we had a good run for that first part of the cycle or second part, right? I, I believe we're in that third wave, web 3.0 or just that third wave as we go. And, and now this next wave is gonna be big and it's gonna be a decades long movement of this transition. Uh, you know, right now I think you're bringing up as well, you know, everyone's kind of dipping their toes. They're trying to figure out, but they don't wanna lose the market share. It's not as high risk. They found certain pain points that actually are solved by things like uh, distributed ledgers, like uh, NFTs, like decentralized applications and blockchain, et cetera, it's solving problems. And so they're going after it. And with that, if it works, and I say if, because of their use cases may, may or may not, and they may change, if it works, they're in the upswing to the next 30, 40, 50 year cycle that we are going through to redo so much infrastructure both both technically and mentally that you know they'll be positioned well and and you know you called it out as well as that there's going to be a generation that just nfts no one knows it's what an nft is it's mm -hmm. just yeah it's just it's just oh this this right um and that this stuff doesn't even matter and that decentralization to them does not matter because everything happens respectfully right i mean you've got uh, you know, distributed computing we've had since the 70s and probably earlier and later than we know. But now we're leveraging it in a new, a new way. We have the sensors, we have the resources, we have the devices out there. It's time. 
So things have kind of come to a unique point for all of us that really the convergence of all of this is just happening. And we're lucky enough, including those viewers that are listening to be a part of it on all sides. It's great. Absolutely. And, and let, let's get into NFTs, you know, let, let's kind of pivot. I know Kyle has some thoughts, Steven, you have some thoughts. Um, product market fit with Harmony. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about crypto kitties and, and kind of congested mm-hmm. networks and like bringing down networks. Um, mm-hmm. Harmony provides solutions to a lot of these, mm-hmm. you know, um, scalability issues and uh, challenges and mm-hmm. risk. Like talk about kind of, and, and, you know, I guess I'm trying to teen it up and, and wrapping in mm-hmm. Harmony into this NFT boom and just how, mm-hmm. how perfect, you know, the protocol, you know, might fit in terms of gas mm-hmm. fees, you know, interoperability and kind of the, you know, tying it all into Eurovision. So how does, you know, Harmony fit into this NFT boom um, in terms of product market fit? Mm-hmm. Well, you said it right. There's so many layers of the infrastructure people need to figure out. And then where does the users gain when they use it and how do they do it? It's a pretty much a full stack of like money, uh, speed, fees, all that problem. But the amazing thing is people don't even think about any of that anymore when people use internet or mobile because magic will just happen if you p- build the infrastructure and platform, right? So we did spend a few years figuring out how to scale, how to connect, how to build really trusses way right, of bridging with all the ecosystem. It's still a little bit of a big story this year, but you asked it correctly. How does it tie back to NFT this year? What is the product market fit that the market is telling us, partners are asking us to do? Which is very interesting. NFT, as Carl said, right, is just an artifact of the standard and technical things. It turns out it really tied to the community culture asset how they form the even DAO, how they believe that this will drive up not just the value, but they will come back for it, right? It's what we see NFT represent for the platform level. To us, decentralization people understand but now. People actually starting to understand the importance of interoperable. If I had NFT, let's say from here on Binance Smart Chain, but I couldn't put in the wallet that owned by some other chain, let's say Flow, what's the purpose? of building another open platform. Actually don't work with another open platform. It's very funny. We call it a cross-chain NFT, right? It's great that if you prefer to be on Ethereum Limited, that's okay if you pay $100,000 for $100,000 pieces, but there are really gonna be many more chains where the flow or like another, um, like uh, uh, many of the like uh, new games that they are launching, which is all good. That's by definition of can, can, uh, can, Cambria explosion, that there'll be many more ecosystems coming. So for us, we are always the infrastructure level because we're an infrastructure engineer. We know that it's the lowest level that platform is scale. So we want to figure out the cross-chain NFT story. I yeah, love, I love it. That's perfect. Go ahead, Adam. I know you got a question. Go for it. <laughs> No, no, go ahead. Yeah, take it away if you want. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I absolutely love the, the, the vision painted because that is the next step, right? What, what is the point in the future of having things tokenized if you can't exchange and move them around, right? Not necessarily talking about exchanging them on a marketplace for value, but moving them uh, in different places, right? So if you look at enterprise use cases, uh, if you have everything that's um, considered a digital twin, so the, the digital uh, representation of something physical, you need to move that maybe from one organization to another or an invoice, uh, for instance, you know, monitoring your supply chain. These are all things that we're, we're working on and are seeing also in areas of mobility and you know, digital birth certificates of cars, keeping that digital record uh, of that, but it needs to move somewhere. And in all fairness, there's not necessarily going to be one to rule them all. So they need to be able to connect. Uh, and I, I, Stephen, I think you're bringing up a great point uh, that is a huge opportunity to anybody listening to build and to focus on as well. Um, because this is, this is a huge gap area and it's going to be between applications, between blockchains, and probably so much more that we haven't even begun to thought about uh, as well. And um, if I can, Adam, I got a quick question for, for Stephen around applications. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Stephen, you and the team at Harmony are, again, awesome, awesome at decentralized applications. I've done my research, I know, so I'm calling it out. <laughs> I'm giving you the credit. Um, you've got a great tutorial on your website about um, bringing a decentralized application from Ethereum over to Harmony. 
And not necessarily that we have to, you know, talk about that scenario, but, you know, mm -hmm. can you walk us through the importance mm -hmm. of building a decentralized application and then also mm -hmm. why it may make sense mm -hmm. to move it from one blockchain to another? Mm -hmm. I'm very glad you asked that question. That's really the best way to understand where is the state of art in terms of platform and uh, quite fragmented ecosystem. In the DeFi space, people understand very well. If I have a yield, I couldn't get into it. That's called fragmentation of the liquidity, right? In NFT, people actually like, right? What? I bought it. I still need to wait for two, two, two weeks and I need to file a customer support to get that. So let me walk through from the very beginning of why building another chain, understanding what is the platform lead, all the way to what the users would feel even this year if they don't have that interoperable um, bait in when they think about things. To begin with, everyone understands the problem of Ethereum even for a few years. People know how to solve it. People actually innovate with the consensus, uh, like um, the sticking. I think that's the two key innovation that we've seen in the last few years. But then that's just solving of an uh, isolated ecosystem. Right, Polkadot and Cosmo very early already talk about how to connect them, right? IBC, Parachain. But then they haven't talked about like, outside the Cosmo ecosystem, how do they connect to the next? I'm talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, it's not even Flow, right? So finally this year, last year, the film in the uh, launch that people finally taking this seriously, that we also understand our need, not just about having fast chain, but having the asset from Ethereum to here, and then whether to Cosmo or Polkadot quickly. So um, if you guys are interested for the developer to hear for the following, which students should be, is talking about how to mint another NFT, is there are lots of tutorial. Students should go through that. Quickly, they'll figure out that I will still want to tie it to an easier virtual machine, EVM, right? So there are all your tooling, Solidity, and how to deploy Truffle and all that. You will learn it. It will be a skill set, just like JavaScript back in the time. So let's marry it to the Ethereum tooling, Metamask. It's what we figured out to the last few months. Give people uh, Metamask support so that there are 5 million uh, active users now that can really easily onboard. The next question Kai asks is, what is the experience like uh, with the developer or users after you do that, right? I purchase an NFT. It's why we are very serious about bringing the cross-chain NFT standard so that whether Ethereum or Polkadot, we know it's already happening. How do they share them with my wallet bill display multiple when I have my gallery? Let's say I hang all my artists on my virtual world when we attend a conference. What does it mean if I only support Ethereum and NFT? That'll be very fun, right? is why we think that developer will take that very seriously, whether you're building a portal wallet, all the way to when you're minting an asset, whether you support any of these cross-chain uh, elements of the infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of what we're talking about here is really being able to allow um, entrepreneurs, startups, people coming, you know, developers coming in, engineers, to really innovate, right? Like not worry about, like you said, you know, what chain do I need to pick? Like, you know, worrying about different standards and so, and, and we're working those out. So I'm not saying, but at a high level, it's like, all right, cool. I can switch things, um, which I think on the NFT side, that's pretty critical in terms of, like you said, sw you know, switching NFTs between, um, between platforms and networks is critical. I think you don't want to be stuck on one end. I don't think it flows right. If, if we're even going to go even grander in terms of enterprises, you know, right now the, the, the talk is musicians and artists and, and um, you know, athletes um, that, that have these uh, technologies uh, available to them, um, which only allows them to, to really just kind of continue to build and, and can continue to create and, and start things uh, from, you know, not building from scratch and not having to worry about um, a lot of the, a lot of these, uh, these problems and challenges that we're facing. Um, so that's good. So even on the NFT side, like what kind of, I guess, I don't know, what are still some of the challenges that you guys are seeing or facing or, or forecasting? Mm -hmm. We do think that uh, finally, at least for NFT, we don't need to worry about, oh, do we have a fast chain to support that? Can wallet actually integrate both the fiat elements so they can buy from credit card, right? The whole um, difference between CryptoKitty and uh, honestly, NBA Topshot is NBA Topshot, most of us actually bought through credit card, 
right? But then how do you quickly like be able to understand the differences between the value? It took a few years, but we are there now. So in terms of yeah, integration, in terms of platform, in terms of speed, to be able to support like could be thousands of artists coming in and then each of them thousands of fans, I think we're just right there, right? To me, the next problem is uh, actually the security of your wallet to be able to display any of the NFT to be part of the digital identity. So that you that wallet is not going to be like, you know, like is it going to be a Coinbase wallet or just origins of an Ethereum asset that we're very excited that it will be a crossing element that the wallet itself, people used to talk about more like, um, more like uh, where do you use your hardware and um, MetaMask to, to, to be uh, buying different things will be very soon become your digital identity. Adam, you're muted. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <clears throat> Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah, no, it's, it's very, uh, it, it, yeah, it's very interesting. And, and Kyle, you brought up something earlier. Like I used to never online shop like in the nineties when the internet hit, right. And, yeah. and now we're talking about digital, like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and non-fungible tokens, unique, you know, um, uh, just put, you know, tokenizing everything in, in, in this world. And, and mm-hmm. uh, like I said, even generationally, like, I don't think, you know, past generations are, are understanding it and kind of know what's up with it. They don't quite get it um, mm-hmm. to the people right now that are, that are buying, you know, buying it up. And I think security, security mm-hmm. is, is definitely a big one. Um, the complexities of NFTs too, like in the standards, it seems like you guys are obviously mm-hmm. tackling that as well. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, we kind of got a couple minutes here. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, Kyle, you got anything else on the NFT side that you don't want to ask? Yeah, um, I was reading an article earlier about uh, tokenization of natural materials. Um, mm-hmm. We talked about mobility. You know, I brought up mm-hmm. the enterprise. Uh, we've talked about, I, you talked about identity. There's so much of the world of tokenization in front of us. We'd love mm-hmm. to hear some areas that you think are of opportunity or where we go mm-hmm. next uh, mm-hmm. in all of this. Because again, the use cases for those listening today are very clear. They're art, they're mm-hmm. collectibles, they're moments, mm-hmm. sports, gaming and a little bit mm-hmm. into the metaverse uh, as mm-hmm. well and some use cases testing. But Stephen, to you, where do you see mm-hmm. these next big opportunity waves uh, coming mm-hmm. from tokenization? Well, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you kind of cover it all, but let me talk about two of the extremes so that we have some sense where the progress is coming in, right? On the digital side, completely virtual and uh, meta side, even the emoji domain names, even you have multiple profiles to show off some of your um, NFT because now things become more virtual in the conference. It's gonna be big, it's gonna be huge, right? Who would know that uh, whether your gig coin like reputation or like having a fun domain name like EMS will become so big, right? And it will be even bigger because there's so much, there's no friction whatsoever. The second level is going to be uh, more like a decentralized digital uh, community. Right. That's why DAO and what I said about digital identity um, will be the second level, right? It's really tied to some friction of, well, I wouldn't say friction, it's just like cohesiveness of a community, whether with DAO, whether there's some money, whether there's some treasure to it, that'll become another NFT that binds them together, whether it's just a social token or um, a, a DAO that help you invest, uh, that'll be part of the NFT story. And then only, I must, I must say, only the very last will be tied to the physical world, which they are actually speeding up. I, I saw lots of like even talk about renewable energy, uh, carbon credit. We know that for a few years, but finally, even the uh, government as well as local support allow that now. Right? There are a lot of talks in Miami this week. We know that people, government actually understand why it's actually great to support that on an open platform. I don't know, it's gonna be Ethereum, but there'll be another blockchain just to support, let's say carbon credit for any of these um, energy resources. Uh, all the way to cars, and w- which require even more support that actually government are very open to it. Have you guys heard of uh, physical non-fungible tokens? <laughs> I, well, we, yeah. Where it's like embedded? I just had a, I just had an interview. You'll see it. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think no. it's happening. yeah. 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 I, yeah. Mean, it's I heard of... about self-replicating ones that are constant. It's constantly changing. It's called the replicator. Really? There you go. Now yeah. we're, now we're talking, man. That, that's kind of crazy. Right. Fun. Yeah. No, there, there's so much, you know, so much going on. I think for, you know, those tuning in like non-fungible mm-hmm. tokens are going to touch a variety of, of, um, you know, aspects in your life from, 
from gaming, right? That's kind of a big, that's kind of a big push. Um, and so it's, it's kind of, it's really exciting. It's definitely unique in its own right. Um, do you see NFTs and DeFi colliding, Stephen? Mm, I, I think actually that's where uh, the field growth incentives, if not just like the financialization, actually make all the difference in the digital world. Right. I mean, finance of art, fine artwork is already happening. We just don't see it. People don't talk about it. People talk about the final price, but then there's so many people behind it. It's not just about the finance part or DeFi part, but the, all, all the people working and the whole hierarchy of the financial system. So NFT index, NFT fractional ownership, NFT like uh, uh, borrow and the whole uh, structure that anything that we do with the fungible world, meaning just money, it actually has to back to the non-fungible world. So that many of the incentive mechanism, financialization, mechanism securitization, even of a piece, is already actually we see quite a few good projects coming specifically DeFi Alliance. We are very impressed with the innovation there. That they call it DeFi Alliance, they should call it just uh, money alliance or something, because like uh, fine art and NFT needs just as much money to make it happen. You know, I, I also was thinking about this, you know, during this boom and even during this conference of like, for me, NFTs is kind of hard to understand the value. It's kind of hard, right? And I, I had to zoom out a little bit. And a lot of the, uh, the talk in this space is like high-end stuff, you know, either the arts and, and expensive things and multiple millions of dollars of things. And like going back to the community aspect at the intro here, it's peer to peer and it's more of an engagement. It's more of a tool. Um, it can reflect the own, you know, fractional ownership of, you know, the Picasso, right. Or, or this one of a kind thing, but, and, and you mentioned earlier, like artists, you know, being able to engage in a social aspect of, of a limited, you know, um, availability uh, of these NFT tokens, right. For, for their audience community, um, and it just really put things in perspective that it's not always, it's what the, the person values, right? Like sentiment, like, and, and you brought it up earlier, Kyle, of the, the, uh, the moment, right. And being able, being able to have that. So, yeah, I'm curious to kind of see, is, is this just, a where are we at in terms of NFTs? You know, we're obviously at the beginning, like, do you see this playing out in the next, you know, a couple of years or like 10, 15 years? Everything will be tokenized in NFT, right? We know that actually. That's crazy. You asked me in a funny way. Like I have yeah. to blur it out, right? Yeah. Kai, you didn't copyright that word yet, right? Moments. No, no, because <laughs> not yet. We were about to you. talk about, if not announce, announcing, moments NFT, right? We're talking about events. We're talking about time-related things, right? Only one special moment in in time. You go to let's say a birthday, right? And now suddenly these twenty people. Uh, have that shared moment where proof of presence, proof of attendance, right? It's real, right? Adam, you said, is it really the peer to peer part or like can everything be uh, monetized? If you flip it the other way to think about it, many of the even physical world resources, they become very cheap, if not infinite now, right? We don't really know think about how much electricity we need to pay or even of uh, like talking FaceTime to a person. It used to be extremely expensive, right? What would be the ultimate limited resources? Obviously, is time, your attention. Yeah. The social graph, actually, you cannot literally connect with like more than thousands of people and give them the same level of social connection, right? So we, we actually summarize it. We haven't really uh, formalized it or announced it yet. The mo we call the moment NFT will be very special. If people find finally tied to a very limited edition because you attend there, because we share a moment together, because you and I have a special bond that we're able to capture that, that special feeling. Yeah, and in it puts it in, you know, in perspective for people that are going to buy NFTs for speculative reasons, for cherishable reasons, sentiment reasons. And for those watching, you know, just kind of be careful, right? There, you kind of hear this hype, but ultimately uh, the underlying NFT kind of functionality spans across a variety of, you know, complicated, you know, um, ways of thinking and like distribution and connecting, but ultimately 
it's up to you on how you value it. So don't always just buy this. You will get burned, you know, for those of you, you will get burned if you're trying to, you know, speculate and you're not, you know, knowledgeable about it, blah, blah, blah. And, and the point I'm trying to say is there's, there's, when we hear NFTs, you know, in the media and going for $70 million, like that's not, that's, that's not going to happen all the time. I think the ones that will skyrocket are the ones that, you know, somebody actually, really cherishes and you know it's going to like come out in the end whether it increases in prices or not that's not the point it's just kind of like genuine right like like i really want this moment um for you know x y and z and and i'm able to keep this like forever and then hopefully it's secure and then we can switch it between networks and, and we're all good exactly so yeah i think we're up on time here um mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think this was a great discussion. We talked about uh, a lot of things, community, Harmony Protocol, NFTs, which is a theme of this event. Um, you know, a lot of the the underlying fundamentals of, of, of Steven's team, why they are where they are, you know, what the work that they've put in, not just in, in the Harmony's, you know, history, but but beyond that. And so I've been fortunate enough to, to, to be friends with, with uh, Steven and the rest of them. They play basketball on Saturdays. <laughs> even has a pretty good shout out to those barbecues, but, um, you know, we're fortunate, um, for them to, to be one of our members and, and supporting us in all of our events. Um, they're actually, uh, uh, they, they wanted to sponsor this event, which has been great. Um, I almost, I almost forgot about that, but you guys have been like totally great and supporting us there. And it really, it just goes back into the production and it goes back to our university program. So we're appreciative of you, you know, contributing to, to kind of the ecosystem and, and we're fortunate to accept that and, and, and redistribute that out to our community. So it, it all comes full circle. Exactly. We are just so grateful to be here. Most of all, just a crazy moment in life that uh, we can build together and we look so much more to the, fo- uh, to the forward in the future. Exactly, exactly. And Kyle, my guest host today, I appreciate you like, you know, jumping on. I know you've been doing a bunch of uh, interviews and keynotes. So thank you for joining in. I, I kind of strategically put this together because, you know, Steven's a friend, Kyle's a friend. You guys are both super smart and, and, and you, you know, everybody can hear it through this, through this discussion. So Kyle, thanks for your time too. Thank you. And thank you, Steven. This has been great. It's been great to riff with both of you and to the audience. I hope you enjoy it. So definitely reach out to Steven and the Harmony team and Adam and the Mousefell team. And lastly, me but those two first nonetheless it's been an absolute pleasure and thank you adam as well for having me and uh steven where can people learn more about harmony connect discord telegrams where are you guys most active and where can they uh, do a little bit more research come check us check us out harmony dot one o n e doesn't get any simpler to understand our message we really believe each of you can be part of the future Follow me on Twitter. I'd be ha- very happy to write out more of uh, what's the latest trend. And I'll take both from technical, but also from the community aspect of things. Awesome, awesome. So for all of you tuning in to Reimagine 2021, um, thank you for, for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Steven C., uh, co-founder of Harmony Protocol. Um, we hope to have you back, Steven, uh, and the Harmony team, of course. You guys have been part of this for the last year. So we appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you again. Thanks, Kyle. We'll see you again, too. Thanks, everybody. This is wonderful. Thanks, Kyle. Adam. Thanks. Bye.